Um, hi, we're here today um, uh, and we're having our conversations with colleagues. So um, uh, today we're actually going to be talking about a topic which is perhaps not known um, uh, uh, by many people, um, but it is becoming more known uh, within the lactation community and that is called dysphoric milk ejection reflex. So when you think about uh, the hormone oxytocin, um, we often think of it as a being a pleasurable uh, or providing a pleasurable experience. Um, and sometimes, um, or it's known as the love hormone. So what happens if this hormone um, triggers negative emotions uh, when you're breastfeeding your infant? Um, this is what's happened in the case that's called dysphoric milk ejection reflex. So we know that the dysphoria occurs generally around or around the milk ejection reflex period of time or just before and it will last for a few minutes a few minutes following and uh, the dysphoria um, that actually is quite abrupt and gives uh, quite negative emotions and in 2018 there was a research um, uh, article published in the um, the Journal of uh, Clinical Lactation called um, The Mystery of uh, Demur what can hormonal research tell us about dysphoric milk ejection reflex? So, and in that study, they actually noted that the edema can be so severe that the um, mothers or lactating parents actually feel forced to wean. So today we have the opportunity to actually speak with a parent, um, a mum, uh, Jessica identifies as a mother, um, and she has four young children aged five and under. And she experienced Dima with um, uh, three of her four children, and she's here to share her experience with us today. So um, welcome, Jessica. Um, thank you. you know. <laughs> Happy to be here. That's great. And thank you again so much for actually offering um, uh, to talk with us because I think your topic is really important. Now, you, we've chatted before and you explained to me that you had had uh, this experience um, uh, with your first three. Would you like to share um, what you went through with your first three um, uh, infants? Sure. So with my first, um, breastfeeding was difficult from the get-go. Um, she was hard to latch. It was painful. It was a horrible experience. Um, as it progressed, I'd say about a month in, I, I started having a lot of emotions um, that I didn't realize had anything to do with breastfeeding at the time. But I almost thought I had postpartum depression mm -hmm. or because I, I just felt miserable all the time. Um, I didn't want to hold her or cuddle with her or do any of those things. Uh, and so I eventually ended up pumping exclusively with her um, and we lasted six months before I had to stop and I got better, but I still hadn't realized it was associated with breastfeeding. I thought it was just, she was older, she was six months and the postpartum stuff was getting better, the baby blues. Um, so with her, I didn't really know what it was. And then come my second, uh, she was better at breastfeeding but around the six week mark, I started getting those feelings again. And my doctor at the time told me to stop breastfeeding. She, she said that it would get better. So I did because I was just, I was crying all the time. I, I felt um, no connection to her. I, I did not enjoy breastfeeding. I didn't like the experience, the feeling. So I was starting to realize it was associated with breastfeeding. So I stopped and it went away within a few weeks, I was fine. And then I had my third and I fully expected those feelings to come back, still not knowing that this was a thing. Um, and they did. And I stopped breastfeeding at six weeks again. And, but I started realizing really with that one, that it was really when I was breastfeeding, there was this feeling that I, I felt really icky in my skin. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to, I, I just wanted to get out of my body, uh, almost like an anxious feeling in the pit of my stomach. Um, it just was a really bad feeling with the breastfeeding and it made me resent my children mm -hmm. a little bit. Like I didn't want them on me and that sort of thing. And then um, when I was pregnant with my fourth, I actually, my friend sent me an article about DMER and I, I, she said, I think this is what you have. And that was the first time I had heard of it. So then I started really looking into it. And with the help of my midwives, um, I told them I really wanted to breastfeed. This, uh, this is my last baby. So they suggested hypnotherapy. So I went to hypnotherapy, but even, I mean, I went and it, it definitely helped. So 
I, you know, I look back and I think my births were pretty much the same for my first three. Mm -hmm. I had hospital births with epidurals. My last birth, I really wanted to do natural, no epidural, no intervention. So everything was different about it. Like I, I tackled the DMER early. I knew what it was. I had my non-intervention birth, so mm -hmm. I had no drugs. And that was a great experience in itself. Mm -hmm. um, and then following that, as soon as she was born and I, she was three weeks old, I went to hypnotherapy and it's it's really changed, not just the DMER. I mean, I have zero symptoms this time. I love breastfeeding. Um, so the whole experience has been completely different for me. It's also helped my generalized anxiety. It's just really been a big change for me, um, which has been a great, a great thing because there's a lot going on right now. Yeah. So to be able to just breastfeed and not worry and not have those feelings, but have the opposite feeling of attachment has just been a great experience. That's, that's amazing. Um, that one thing I noted, I realized is that you actually went for the hypnotherapy. Were you having any symptoms at three weeks? Uh, not really. Um, it okay. usually starts a bit later for me around yep. five or six weeks yep. and she spent three weeks in the NICU. So That's I true. wasn't exclusively breastfeeding for mm -hmm. the first three weeks. Um, she was getting bottles overnight. I was pumping though, when I was yes. home and yep. pumping also brings it on for yep. me. So, but no, and I hadn't really had any, I would say DMER symptoms yet. Just uh, you know just normal newborn things yes. yeah yeah yes. <laughs> she was in the NICU so it was difficult yes. yeah but when she got home I really wanted to she was a great breastfeeder I could tell already and I wanted to make sure I did everything I could to try and yeah. breastfeed successfully yeah. yeah so so then that's when we tackled it with the hypnotherapy and I was very skeptical yes <laughs> I'm not yeah. one to do those things or to believe in those things but it immediately was such a drastic change and I really like that he the way it was done is something that I can reinforce when I'm home okay. so with one session and then every time I breastfeed I repeat the same steps and it just brings back those positive feelings and okay. the more often I repeat the steps the more positive the feelings become okay so that was really useful for me it's not something I have to go to all the time or you know return at something I can reinforce at home yeah. So it's actually um, been beneficial for you all around um, yes. and being, being a, being a mum of four, four little yes. ones. So um, and I had generalized anxiety. And yes. so one session, we only did two sessions. One was specific to breastfeeding. One yes. was specific to my generalized anxiety. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I think they're very closely linked. So yeah. it was good though, to be able to tackle both and both have been drastically improved <laughs> that's that's really wonderful so you're now your little one just turned uh, two months yesterday so yes and you are really enjoying uh um being a being a mom and uh and breastfeeding which is really wonderful so if you were to give any key messages um uh, that you'd like to share with the uh, health professionals and other parents what do you think they'd be i wish i had known that it wasn't normal mm -hmm. to have those feelings I think that some people I spoke to diminished them just to be like, oh, breastfeeding is hard or, oh, it'll get better. Or, but there was no real investigation into why, why are you feeling like this? So I, I would tell people that if they're not feeling right or they're struggling with that to, you know, advocate for themselves more or like, and health ex experts to know about it more and to bring it up. And I really think it should be addressed when parents are, um, released from the hospital with mm -hmm. their babies, it should mm -hmm. be part of that information package about, you know, the effects that breastfeeding can have mm -hmm. hormonally or with the, you know, the oxytocin, that it, it's something they should be watching for. Okay, so if even when we do discharge um, education, just to be aware, we talk about, uh, well, often we don't talk about postpartum depression neither, but these are things that I think perhaps we should be discussing that it's, you know, having any types of feelings that are actually out of the normal, um, talk to people, right? Make sure you actually, um, you know, and have, um, have better education uh, about it so that you can actually get to enjoy um, uh, feeding your, your little ones. Um, this to try and around. remove the stigma, because I yes. think some, like some others just think it should be natural and just yes. happen. And, you know, that's not the case for a lot of us. Yes. And, 
Yeah. And so we need to remove that stigma of not talking about it being difficult because yeah. I definitely had a lot of guilt, especially with my first when I stopped, like I want to do this, but I can't for yeah. my own mental health. So yeah. I think yeah. that's really, really important. And uh, I really want to thank you, Jessica, um, you know, and I'm really glad you're enjoying um, your experience Me meeting your little one this time. Um, I will say for our listeners, if anyone is interested in learning more about um, Nadima, um, we will post uh, in the links of the comments so uh, you can um, read about it. And for our healthcare professionals, please um, you know, ask uh, your, um, uh, your clients if they are having any feelings and, and help, it, help them. Um, find uh, good solutions. Now we know um, hypnotherapy is one option. There are many other options um, out there, but if we don't know about it, we can't help them. So thank you again so much. Thank really you. Really appreciate it.